Hello, my name is Eric Shannon, and this video is a final report for Design and Manufacturing class instructed by Dr. DuPont at Oregon State University, Spring 2017. This video is meant to discuss the steps to redesign of a product currently in the market, to detail how the redesign was carried out, and to outline key takeaways from along the process. Please enjoy. The product that is to be redesigned is a power charging station. These devices serve to hold electronics and act as power sources for multiple devices. There are as many models like the ones shown that can be easily found at online retailers that range in price between $10 and $50. The first step in this redesign was to identify and brainstorm solutions to issues that users have had using these products. To do this, I both used personal experience and took a dive into the review sections of popular products on Amazon. I ended up focusing on three issues. One, the flexibility and electronic sizes these products can hold. Two, all of these products had to be continuously plugged into a wall in order to charge. Three, inconvenient cable management systems. Many tend to become more limiting than convenient. To focus on these pain points, I began to draw concept sketches, and after a few think tank sessions and some independent work, I chose the following design. The general idea is to encase a portable power bank to charge the products, then take it on the go. The lid has a modular slot so the dividers can be added or removed as needed to accommodate multiple size electronics. The power bank is able to charge devices even when not plugged in, and the product can accommodate any length of cord. As I decided to use vacuum forming for the base, I made my mold with a downward taper and rounded edges so that the mold would pop out after cooling and the plastic would be able to fit into the geometry easily. For the mold, I ended up using a soft styrofoam block that would easily be cut and use that in combination with the battery itself to achieve the final shape. I started with an eighth inch square foot of textured ABS thermoform plastic and stapled it down to a wooden frame to hold it while it was heated in an oven at 425 degrees. Next, I used a vacuum forming machine in OSU's machine shop that used a shop vacuum and a bed plate with air holes to create a suction force pulling the plastic to the shape of my mold. I pressed down trouble spots on the piece and then allowed it to cool to get the final shape. Next, I used a vertical bandsaw to cut out the final shape for the molded sheet and went on to cut out the slots for the cords by marking them with a permanent marker, using a razor and drill to get the rough shape, and finally sanding it down using a Dremel until the slots were as I wanted them to be. To create the dividers, I used HDPE, as it is a sturdy material that can be machined. I started by cutting pieces to length on a circular saw, then milled the pieces to the desired 3 8 inch thickness, then drilled and tapped locations for fasteners. Finally, I beveled the edges on a belt sander. To make the lid, I used a quarter inch thick scrap wood to trace the desired shape. Next, I marked out all the locations for the divider fastening points. I cut the shape on a vertical saw and drilled the quarter inch holes on OSU's drill press. Finally, I sprayed the entire piece black to match the base. For a final assembly, I took six 1 inch 1024 fasteners and bolted them into the dividers at a distance that would have fit my phone and placed the battery in position and pressed the lid into place. My design is now finished. I believe my choice of 1 8 inch textured ABS worked well. It's a good material for physical resistance and it held the pieces together. Ideally, I would have liked to make the lid out of ABS as well, but I had some issues forming the shape as I intended to originally. That's why I ended up going with wood. Some footage I did not show you was some failed ABS vacuum forming. I had two other attempts. The first was much too hot and ended up drooping into the oven, compromising the sheet. The second was not hot enough and did not drape over the part as I needed. I also made another version from PETG 132 inch to practice assembly, which helped me dial in my process. That is shown here. 